All right, looking at a bunch of examples of our three factoring techniques. The directions say factor completely. So again, be on the lookout for GCFs before you start using one of our three factoring techniques odd and the two even rules. So here's 3x squared minus 10x minus 8. Okay, so what is my answer going to look like? I'm going to look at the minus 8. It tells me my two signs are opposites. I'm going to take that first a, the 3 and my x squared. I'm going to put it on both terms. One of these will have a GCF of 3 when I'm done. We'll reduce it. We'll be done with our answer. So these two blanks are now these two blanks right here. So again, looking for what two numbers multiply to be AC. Well, wait a minute. We have 3 times negative 8. Our B is negative 10. That's even. 8's even. We're going to break this down to a 4 and a 2. We only have one odd factor. So what we're looking at is does the 3 need to be multiplied to the 4 or does the 3 need to be multiplied to the 2? And we are subtracting, because my signs are opposite, to get to the 10. So I do need a number bigger than 10. So the 3 is not going to be multiplied to the 2. That would be 6 and 4. I need the 3 to be multiplied to the 4. So it's going to be 2 and 12. 12 is the bigger number. Keep the sign. The negative 12, the 12 goes in the minus blank. The positive 2 goes in the plus blank. Now, the first one does not have a GCF. So 3x plus 2 is part of my answer. 3x minus 12 does have a GCF of 3. We divide it out, and we get x minus 4. And that's my final answer. And if you recall, this was the example that I showed you from the book that wrote out eight different binomial factorings to get to that problem. You had to foil it out. No. Which one do you think is easier? This is by far easier. Okay, 5x squared plus 7x minus 6. Looking at my 6, it's a minus. That means 1 plus 1 minus and use the 5 twice. 5x plus something, 5x minus something. Those two blanks are now these blanks in my ABC rule. All right, so as we look at this, we have a middle term that's odd. Well, 5 is odd, but 5 and 6 do not subtract to be a 7. So break the 6 down. We need the factor of 3. Take the 2 and apply it to the 5. 2 times 5 is 10. So 10 and 3 will subtract to be my 7. And the 10 will be the positive and the 3 will be negative. All right, so the negative 3, put the 3 in the minus blank. The 10 goes in the plus blank. 5x plus 10, this binomial has a GCF of 5. We take it out. That gives us an x plus 2. This binomial does not have a GCF. It goes in my answer, and there's my final answer. 8x cubed plus 2x squared minus 6x. Wait a minute, there's x's in every term. Every coefficient is even, so let's take out a 2x as the GCF. Now that 2x is going to go in my answer with my two binomials that I write down below here. I have a minus 3 again. Signs are opposite. Use the 4 twice. 2x, first binomial 4x plus something, second binomial 4x minus something. Okay, write up your ABC rules. What two numbers multiply to be 4 times the negative 3 and add up to be 11. Well, in this case, it subtracts. So if it subtracts, one number has to be bigger than 11. And since 11 is odd, we need an odd and an even. But right now, my only odd factor is 3. So 4 minus 3 is not getting to 11. So now I legitimately have to multiply these together, make it a 12. And now 12 and 1 will subtract to be my 11. And since 12 will be the bigger, it gets the plus sign. The 1 smaller gets the negative. Now, another dead giveaway is notice how 11 is much bigger than 4 and 3. That means you usually have to multiply those together. So plus 12 goes in the first blank. Negative 1 goes in the minus blank. 
We have no GCF here, but we do have a GCF over here. Take out the 4 and get 2x plus 3. I guess I got my clicks out of order here. So there's the 4x minus 1. Taking out the 4 gives me the x plus 3, and my 2x stays in my answer. Next, we have a plus 5. Okay, that signs are same. They're both pluses. So 4x plus something, 4x plus something. These two blanks, again, are going to be the blanks in my ABC rule. What two numbers multiply to be 4 times 5 and add up to be 12? 12 is even. 4 is even. So it's an even plus an even. So we break the 4 down. One of these twos has to be multiplied to the 5 and make it a 10, so my numbers are 2 and 10. Well, since they're both plus plus, doesn't matter which blanks you put them in, but they're both even numbers, so we're going to take a GCF of 2 out of each binomial to get the 2x plus 1 and the 2x plus 5, and there's my final answer. <coughs> Next example, oh, wait a minute, there's something wrong here. I'm okay with having a y squared with my x squared first, but the y squared has to be the last term, so we've got to put them in the right order. So my x's are in descending order. Here's x to the first. Your y squared starts on the right and counts backwards going to the left. So we have a plus 4. Signs are the same. They're both minus signs. So we're going to have 6x minus something y and 6x minus something y. Both are the same. And then we'll take out the GCFs when we get done. So what two numbers multiply to be 6 times 4? And because they're both minus signs, they got to add up to be 19. 19 is odd. So I need an odd factor from the 6. So I'm going to go 2 times 3, isolate that. And that's going to give me 3 times 8, but 3 and 8 don't add up to a 19. So let's multiply 6 and 4, 24 and 1. They're both going to be negative, but neither of these pair are going to add up to be a minus 19. So this trinomial is prime. Over here we have a plus 18. 60, whoa, 63. This middle term is really big. So that means my factors are probably going to be really far apart. Okay, so we're going to go 10 minus something, 10 minus something. Plus sign says the two signs are minuses. Use the 10 twice. What two numbers multiply to be 10 times 18 and add up to be 63 because both signs again are the same? 63 is odd, so I need odd factors here. <clears throat> 10, we have a 2 and a 5. 18 is 2 times 9, and the 9 breaks down to 3 and a 3. So I'm going to isolate the 3. And what's left is 10 times this 6, which is 60. And 60 and 3 add up to be my 63. They're right there. So negative 3, negative 60. Put them in each blank. No GCF of the first one. That goes in your answer. GCF of 10, take that out. X minus 6. There we are factored. Our next example, 6x squared plus 23x plus 20. We have a plus 20. The signs are the same. They're both going to be plus signs. 6x plus something, 6x plus something. That's what my answer looks like. Now those blanks are right here. What two numbers multiply to be 6 times 20 and add up to be 23? Again, because they're both the same signs. 23 is odd. I need odd factors. 2 and 3, 4 and 5. So we're going to have 3 times something, 5 times something, and multiply them together 15 times something. So I cover up the 3. 20 times 2 is 40. Nope, that doesn't add up to 23 because 40 is already too big. Cover up the 5. 6 times 4 is 24. 24 is bigger than 23. It's got to be 15 and 2 times 4, 8. Yep, 15 times 8 is still going to give me the same thing as 6 times 20, and 15 plus 8 gives me the 23. Doesn't matter which blanks you put them in because they're both plus plus. 
Uh, let's see. First binomial, we have a GCF of a 3. Take that out. We have 2x plus 5. Second binomial, both numbers are even. Take out a 2. That gives me 3x plus 4, and now it's completely factored. All right, 8x squared plus 6x minus 9. It's a minus 9, so my signs are opposite. So 8x plus something, 8x minus something. Those two blanks are part of my ABC rule here. So what two things multiply to be 8 times negative 9. And they have to subtract to be 6, and 6 is even. 8's even, so it's an even and an even. So we break the 8 down to a 4 and a 2. The 9 is a 3 and a 3. So we have no choice. This 2 has got to multiply to a 3. That 4 has to multiply to a 3. It's 6 and 12. And 12 minus 6 is 6. So the 12 carries the plus sign. The 6 being smaller carries the minus sign. The negative 6. Okay, 6 goes in the minus blank. 12 goes in the plus blank. And now reduced by the GCF. So 8 and 12 has a GCF of 4, giving me 2x plus 3. 8 and 6, GCF of 2, gives me 4x minus 3. There's my final answer. Next, ooh, lots of x's, lots of even numbers. I see a GCF in my future thinking that it's, how about a 2x squared? Remember, it's always x to the smallest power. Divided out of every term, 30x to the fourth divided by 2x squared is 15x squared. 28x cubed divided by 2x squared minus the 14x. Minus the 30x squared divided by 2x squared minus 15. All right, so now, it's a minus 15. This 15 will be used twice. 1 plus 1 minus, bring the 2x squared down as part of my answer. What two numbers multiply to be 15 times 15? And they're going to have to subtract to be 14. So. We're going to break down our odds here to 3 and 5, 3 and 5. Well, right now, I know 15 and 15, that will subtract to be a 0, so it's not this. So let's trade, well, wait. Well, we can have 3 times something, 5 times something, and a 9 times something. And let's see, so if I cover up the 3, that's going to give me... 15 times 5 is 75. I cover up a 5. 15 times 3 is 45. Cover up the two threes. 5 times 5 is 25. I didn't go with the 15 because I can see them right here. That adds up to be a 0. <clears throat> so let's see. 75 and 3. Nope. Too big. 45 minus 5. 40. Too big. 25 minus 9. It's close. That's a 16. So since none of these numbers worked, it's not prime. This trinomial is prime, but because we factored out the 2x squared as the GCF, this then is my final answer. Whoa, ugly over here. Never want to have your x squared term be negative. Uh, let's see, 18, 39, 18. Oh, divisible by 3. Let's take out a GCF of a negative 3. Then we'll work with this right here. We have a plus 6. The signs are the same. They're both going to be minus signs. So 6x minus something, 6x minus something, and the negative 3. Keep that in front of your binomial. It's part of my answer. What two numbers multiply to be 6 times 6 and add up? Because it's a plus 6, so both signs are the same. We're adding. Add up to negative 13, which is odd. So peel off the odd factors, 2, 3, 2, 3. It's either 3 times something or 9 times something. Um, let's see, 9 and 4 add up to be 13. There's my numbers. They're both negative. If I isolated the 3, I would have 2 times 6, which is 12. 12 and 3 add up to be 15, so that's too big. So put them in either blank. Take out the GCF. This first binomial here has a GCF of 3. Don't cancel with the GCF out here. That has to be in our answer. So this is now 2x minus 3, keeping the negative 3. GCF of a 2 here gives me 3x minus 2. That's my final answer. Oh, here we are with x squareds in the front, y squareds in the back. So again, 
It's a minus 28. Signs are opposite. Start your 6x in the front of both, and we'll put in a minus y and a plus y. There they are. What two numbers multiply to be 6 times the negative 28? And because my signs are opposite, subtract to be 17. Whoops, 17 is odd. So find your odd factors. 2 and a 3, 4 and a 7. So we're looking at 3 times something, 7 times something, or multiply the 3 and the 7 together to get 21. My guess, I'm thinking, is it going to be 17? If I cover up the 7, that's, nope, that's 24. 24 minus 7, yep, it's 17. There's my two numbers right there. So 24 carries the plus sign. 7 will carry the negative, so the minus blank gets the 7, and the positive 24 gets the plus. Uh, let's see, we take out a GCF of a 6 here, gives me x plus 4y. No GCF there, so it goes in my answer, and that's my final answer. 12x squared minus 28x plus 15. All right, it's a plus. That means my signs are the same. They're both minus signs, so 12x minus something, 12x minus something. Those two blanks are these blanks in my ABC rule here. So 12 times 15, that's my A and C, my middle term. That's an even number. 12 is even. Okay, so break it down. We got to have 2, so this 12 is 2 times 2 times 3. And my 15 is 3 times 5. These 2s have no choice. They have to be part of the factors of these two even numbers. Cross them out. Take a 2 out of the negative 28, we need a 14. So again, we are adding to be 14. So I don't want the 15 and the 3. That adds up to 18. So move the 3 with the 3. 9 and 5, that adds up to be 14. They're both going to be negative. 2 times negative 9 is negative 18. 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. <clears throat> and again, just as a check, negative 18 and a negative 10, which is what these values are, do add up to be a negative 28, so everything's good. Doesn't matter which blanks they go in because they're both minuses. GCF of the first binomial is a 6, gives me 2x minus 3. GCF of the second binomial is a 2, gives me 6x minus 5. And there's my final answer. And that wraps up our sixth.